person uh, named Felipe David came running into our office saying, explosion, explosion, explosion. And when I saw him, he has all his skin pulled from under his armpits and missing pieces on his face. An explosion deep down in the tower before the plane crashed 95 floors above. Others live to report enormous explosions below the towers. Construction worker Philip Morelli was in North Tower sub-basement 4 at the time of the first plane strike. I go downstairs, the foreman tells me to go to remove the containers. As I'm walking by the main freight corridor building in the corridor, that's, that's when I got blown. I mean, the impact of the explosion of whatever happened it threw me to the floor, and that's when everything started happening. Blown to the floor. Let's hear what happened next. I was racing. I was going towards the bathroom. All of a sudden, I opened the door. I didn't know it was a bathroom, and all of a sudden, a big impact happened again, and all the ceiling tile was falling down. The light fixtures were falling, swinging out of the ceiling, and I come running out the door, and everything, the walls were down, and now I started running towards the parking lots. There was a lot of smoke down there. There was a lot of people screaming. People came with us running up the ramps. Philip then ran underground to the South Tower. You know, you got to go clear across the hole from one to one to two World Trade Center. You know, I mean, that's the way you got to run. And then all of a sudden, it happened all over again. Well, something else hit us to the floor. Right in the basement, you felt it. Walls were caving in. Everything that was going on. I, I mean, I know of people that got killed in the basement. I know of people that got broken legs in, their, in the basement. People got reconstructive surgery because the walls hit them in the face. Engineer Mike Pecoraro in the sixth sub-basement found the parking garage and machine shop reduced to rubble. Rescue firemen and civilians spoke of hearing explosions throughout the towers. Firefighter Lou Caccioli told People magazine that as he and others evacuated workers, bombs were going off inside the building. Explosions stalled elevators and filled entire floors with smoke and debris. That's, uh, an eyewitness who said there was an explosion on floor 7 to 8. 7 to 8. Uh, that is dispatch. We've just had another explosion. Warren Street because of the secondary explosion. We've got numerous people covered with dust from the secondary explosion. William Rodriguez helping the firefighters reports blasts within the North Tower well before it fell. As I went up, I remember listening to small explosions on the upper floors, and these small explosions were not coming from the area of the impact. It was coming from lower floors. And when the second plane hit the south tower... We heard boom! When we heard boom, inside our building, the north tower, we heard pa 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 and on their security radio, we heard, we lost 65, we lost 65, meaning the 65th floor collapsed. And as we went down the stairwells, you could hear the actual collapsing inside the buildings. You heard rumble, you heard uh, the cracking of the walls, you, uh, I, I mean, pieces falling right next to us of uh, the actual building. What happened at the base of the towers just before they came down? Smoke appeared at street level. This video was shot from New Jersey. An explosion is heard as white smoke rises at the base of the building. Watch the camera shake on its tripod as a large energy source rocks the ground. 
Nine seconds later, the North Tower falls. I heard like an explosion and then a cracking type of noise. And then it sounded like a freight train rumbling and picking up speed. I looked up and I saw it coming down. As I came out of the North Tower, everything started trembling under my feet like an earthquake. The only thing I saw was a fire truck. I ran towards the fire truck and slid right under when the building started to collapse right on top of the fire truck. Across the Hudson River, Richard Siegel was filming an astonishing day. The sound meter of Richard's camera caught something very significant. Adjusted for the distance involved, as sound travels more slowly than what we see, the camera registered multiple explosions in the towers. Here is the South Tower record. Then the building fell. Let's look carefully at the collapse itself. Notice the puffs of concrete issuing from the sides of the building well ahead of the collapse wave. Called squibs in demolition language, these are actual explosives, charges firing visibly through the exterior as gravity pulls the building down. Here are more. Shattering from the top, engulfed by banana peel plumes, these were no ordinary implosions. The Twin Towers each consisted of three multi-story buildings set on top of one another. To sustain the weight of so many floors, the sky lobbies had to be extra heavily reinforced. Watch a big squib coming from the sky lobby band. Powerful blast produces what is called a shock wave. Explosions generate extremely high compressional waves that exceed the limits of surrounding air and space, creating a violent force. When the debris started coming down, I was right in the shadow of the South Tower. I was less than 100 yards away. Everybody saw the video over and over again of that cloud chasing people down the street. It was like a tornado. It was like being hit by a wave at the beach, but the wave was intense, it was hot, it was noisy. It was like getting hit in the back by gravel. Blocks, like somebody had picked up handfuls of rocks and was just throwing them at you. And the noise kept coming and coming, and one second I was running, and the next second I was flying. I was just, um, I had no control over my feet, no choice as to what direction I was going. I, I was in the air, and it seemed like I was being followed by, by, this, by this tornado, this tornado of darkness. The South Tower fell first. This is the shockwave blast as it rocks the tower next door. As the buildings fell, they darkened Manhattan, filling the air with billowing clouds of dust and ash. What produces these huge, scudding, cauliflower-like masses of slowly moving dust?
True, a 110-story building has just been reduced to a million tons of rubble. But is there anything in our experience we can compare it to? A volcano. The U.S. Geological Survey website provides us with a definition of a pyroclastic flow as a ground-hugging avalanche of hot gas and debris. The rising gas chimney is clearly visible in this photo of the North Tower implosion with pyroclastic flows between buildings. The cauliflower shape of the debris clouds is a telltale sign of pyroclastic flows generated by massive explosions typical of volcanic eruptions and controlled demolitions. A pyroclastic surge can even flow over water as hot gases carry dust created by explosive energy. Here, the South Tower implosion creates a pyroclastic surge moving out over the Hudson River. A volcanic eruption produces exactly the same thick scudding ash, heavy with debris, hugging the ground as it flows out from a tremendous internal explosion. On the southern tip of Manhattan, surrounded by water, huge retaining walls were built below the World Trade Center to hold back the ocean and Hudson River. The bathtub, as it was called, held seven levels of parking garages, maintenance rooms, and the New Jersey PATH train station. After September 11th, the three-foot-thick slurry walls were found to have shifted up to 18 inches inward. These walls are coming in. These walls hold back the river. So if these walls cave in, this place is going to get flooded out by the river. Let's think about this. A pancake collapse should have left the foundations in place. They had always borne the weight of 110 floors. But something happened in the sub-basements to disrupt them. All the collapse had gone down to track level. So we had 60, 70 feet of wall totally unsupported. What kind of force could have dislodged so many stories deep underground? The file itself seemed to have a life of its own. It spewed fire when we dug into it. The ground continued to burn. Les Robertson publicly reported that three weeks after the collapse, live fires burned and molten metal still flowed underground. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fires that are still burning. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. Still toed boots is one of the biggest things. Out still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. In November 2005, physics professor Stephen Jones of Brigham Young University published a 25-page treatise on the collapse of the Twin Towers and Building 7, applying the laws of physics to the official story, from an interview on MSNBC. As we read in the FEMA report, it says here, and I put this in my paper, of course, the best hypothesis, which is the only one they looked at, the fire, has only a low probability of occurrence. Further investigation, invest, uh, analyses are needed to resolve this issue. And Professor, I agree with I am that. sorry that we are out of time, and I, I'm not sure that Whoa. Uh, you uh, One other thing I want to mention okay, about... Okay, if you can hit it, uh, just okay. with it quickly. All right. there, there, okay, here we go. Molten metal in the basements of all three buildings. Right. And yet uh, all scientists now uh, uh, reasonably... Uh, agree that the fires were not sufficiently hot to melt the steel. So